notoriety as the team of making this video as 21 missions and as we all know, most of them are heavily based from Payday 2, just like the whole game itself or whatever. I will be ranking every single one of them with originality, map design, how fun it is, how rewarding it is, and personal talk as well be coming to play as you may notice. With the first mission in the game, Havali Shop, as a start mission, it's a good one at that. It's a one simple objective, which is to hit the ground, and it only takes to reach the glass on the display cases to hit the Havali for extra cash, which almost everyone already knows how to do. If you don't want to do stealth, it only takes to use the power box at the bottom of the building, which disables all of the cameras. Or, in double difficulties, you can shoot the cameras too. And then take out the guards and civilians on the map. The design looks nice, uh, although it's a special map from Payday 2. Some people say Havali Store, and some even say Ukrainian Shop. The main difference between these two is that Havali Store requires bikes to escape, while Ukrainian Shop only requires a tire inside the safe, and the Havali Euro Loot is option. Havali Shop from Notoriety requires to hit a ground inside one of two saves. I'm not going to save based on the Ukrainian Shop because that might just be an accidental coincidence. Then it's most likely going to be a rewind to this map made by the same guy, where it will be an original lotion and design rather than one taken from Payday. And that every call is a for tanto to decide. When it comes to a reward, Havali Shop is a good mission for cash. And not part of the best, you can take you up to almost 900k in less than 4 or 5 minutes alone. My best being under 3 minutes. However, this guy shines when it comes to grinding levels in the game, because this mission requires only one thing to be completed the ground. Inside one of two safes, you can lock pick the safe, or both of them, if you watch the wrong one, and complete the highs in only one minute. You can blow out the sides or in a trip mine with the scale and complete the highs even quicker. The camel to a lot to reset repeat debuffs and a repeat bonuses to other highs. In summary, the highs is a great start for new players for the basic game mechanics. So this is an A. mission or all them first of all it looks terrible as in very bad even the old version was aesthetically better and that one was made all the way back in 2015 this one just feels boring and empty the rest of this map are completely useless aside from making you untouchably loud they serve no purpose in the old version, you could at least get in the vents from the roof and take out the carver operator safely and also get safe access to the vault area. In here, not only do you have to go from inside, but you can even go to the camera room. And apparently, this entry only opens when the high house loud like. Come on, this map is built very badly. But what about the gameplay? Well, if you want to steal, you need to head in the control room and take out the camera operator with a tabby to the key card or with an ECM shamer with a specific kill. Then you need to use a drill for the ball. Unfortunately, silent drills in this game don't exist, so everyone around will be alerted. This is one sound downside compared to the old notoriety. Silent drills literally don't exist. You have to deploy a drill and to take out everyone around it. There is no other choice to take care of the civilians and the optimal way is to kill them out, which, as you may know, you need to pay heavily. The other way is to keep them alive, but it's very risky. Yes, you can hit a 4 player team with a 4 24 cable attack in total, but personally, that's just a rare sight. After that, congrats, you know how to wait minutes for a drill. You can FK or open the only ATM. In this map, when the ball opens, you have four rows of the boxy boxes and three safes. 
I'm not going to say too much in the loop part, but you can get a few million from the chest, you get all the loot. And the only way to secure bags is to drive them all the way to the job at the parking lot. And in this van, in Lau, this map is okay, you actually do something while by the hotel. Enemies can also break your roof and access from there, so that's really cool. I wish there was more of this in this map, and well, there is not much else to talk about. This map is poorly made and there is really one escape point all the way back to the top of the world. This guys gets a C. Thankfully, this is one of the missions that they probably get in the band of the future and for gold. <laughs> Cave Factory is a Christmas theme mission. It was originally released in December of 2015. It was okay. It was some, some cool things for completing it. And in the revamp version, we got chess. It was horrible in every single way. Thankfully, after the 724 or 2018, this map got revamped again. This time, it actually looked good. It was now and use the machine, while also defending power boxes. I never really found a thing that defend all power three power boxes for some reason, but after you hit a person, you have to repeat this process at least seven more times by if you're not in the to the test. While this map looks good, I feel like some things are missing. Gameplay wise, while personally there is no map for about, there are no other objectives fail for sure on your average infinite pack highs, which is very cool to pay out. doesn't mean much. Hey, it's a little fun. Well, I don't think it's very fun either, so I like that a bit. Next map is 4 stores. 4 stores is truly something to follow. An example of I should never make a mission there. Everything is wrong about this one. The map, the gameplay, the payout. The map is really sorry to me. Not only there is really few detail path into it, but the stores are far away from each other. And in Ajedre he got this, this can make the highs really annoying to sell since you have a lot of civilians around this area. This was fine back when the file of we was of civilians was really low, but times have changed. And now they can see miles away. When you do get all cash registered from matches for tours, you now have to wait for Japan. Interesting, I know. In other difficulties, you have to wait at least 5 minutes. And for what? Well, almost nothing. In Lao, you need to wait 8 minutes instead of 5, as if it wasn't enough. I can't find anything good about this guy, except maybe that it's a good map for getting updates or levels in Lao, so it's actually easy to do. If it wasn't for that, it would run into the lowest there. Well, it actually does, but there is a worse map out here. This guy will run at the second worst mission in the game because, believe me, there is one even worse than this. Diamond Store is based on Diamond Stone from PD2. Thanks for watching. The appearance looks great and the surroundings look detailed, but the map has one flow and that it does have a lot of reports from people for it being really light and optimized. So it is likely that this mission is being revamped in the future. Map aside, 
it can be completed quickly in minutes. If you try hard enough, you can complete it in nightmare difficulty alone in 2 minutes or even less than 2. It only takes you to find your camera operator, your manager, and your kicker reader. It's a good way from getting cash, less time taking if your teammates well, although they're not powers. And now, you have to wait 5 minutes for the band to come back in Nightmare Difficulty. But at least you get some action. The band always spans back to the same spot. This guy hits an A. Well, it is a viable way to get cash quickly instead. The map is, well, it does a stand allowed out from the pay the base. Our gallery is like Diamond Store, but in a museum, and with paintings, and in the night. You can go in through four different ways, the main entrance, this window, the bathroom, or through the skylights. The skylights can be very useful if you're near a model, explore the map, be on risk instead, and also to locate paintings very safely, but it doesn't affect anything beyond that. The map doesn't have much either, it's just a really similar version of our gallery from Payday 2, which is the standard alone version of Frame in Frame Day 1. The paintings you need to take are located randomly around the map, and there is a set of lasers that spawn randomly in one doorway. There is nothing else to say about it, it can be done quickly, and the Chimone Rebel is decent for the time you can take. Well, that's all. This guy says, uh, 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 any, for a new player it's an okay map, but it's boring and it's not very, very unique. Ah yes, chess mission. I surely had nightmares with it before. The chess map looks almost the exact same as it is 6 years ago, but with a few not to ticks over the years. Now, you may know this mission for being a decent star after doing an infamy, since you can do it easily instead with a lot amount of skill points required. Aside from that, what does this mission offer? Still, it's very boring after reserving the cameras, getting the two kickers, using the two kicker readers, and taking out the wall map, all you do is just wait and avoid the pawn every once in a while. After the 5 minute template finishes, congrats, you now have 12 bucks of money to move, fun and new. In Lau, the band driver goes away, so you have to use a different way to secure bags. Instead of using the keycard to wait for the time lock, use a drill, which takes around the same time. When you open the wall, however, you need to secure the bags using a key, which you can assemble using three passes, cues, drops, and you have to raise a balloon so the planes take the bags. Defending the bags in the cave from the enemies is really really annoying because they just rush a lot. They target bugs even more than players. If you don't have the recovery bugs in the cage, but the time the planes arrives, you have to take the other bugs to the sewers. The correct bug is randomized. The pan is still in the scourge. After the intense bug moving, you can now escape from the map, not being original or good looking at goal. And um, how boring this guy is in stealth and even loud. This guy will run really low, but just because of the early experience in my part, I will rent this guy to a C instead.
Chemation, the Spike in Players, Every October, Forge Armor and Weapon Skins, Trek or Treat. I appreciate the original idea behind it, but they're just gonna find it fun. When you take the pal, you either have candy, which is the thing you want, or if you can spot a cloaker, a really bad minigun dancer, or a flashbang, which is given to hitting absolutely nothing, all depending on luck. To escape, you need 10 bags regardless of the difficulty, and I don't really like this map very much because I don't know if you can really lucky, but most of the time I just don't get candy from the doors. I even had a game where I got a mystical shotgun four times in a row. When you do get the candy, you secure it in a dumpster. Aside from the rewards, I just don't find anything easy about the house. It was interesting for a few days when I released October 21st of 2020. But I just lost interest in it just in a few days. So if it wasn't for the rewards you can have done in October, it will be ranked low. But not of an auto pair with four stores, so it will be ranked to a C. Mall raid is about raiding a mall. Good description, I know. The map is of course a mall and it really lacks to be honest. Not only because it's a pay the map, but because it's small. Some people might let the map be more compact, but I sure don't. I feel like it messed a lot of stores acquirement made. The goal of this mission is to break a certain amount of glass. In armor difficulty, it needs 85% of luck broken. Sometimes when breaking glass, you may end up having broke all the glass you could see, uh, but still can find the rest for it to be 85%. Eventually, you will find the rest of the glass, but it's annoying. After you do break enough glass, your escape will arrive on 9 minutes. Why? Enemies can only come from one side, which is the entrance, which makes it kind of easy to choose slow the enemies the moment they appear on site. When the helicopter doors arrive, you get nothing. 10 minutes of waiting, just to get less than a million. The XP reward is even worse. It's possible to sell these heights in lower difficulties if you break the required class before the alarm is set off. The helicopter will take less time to arrive. Completing it in stealth can give you a badge. So, aside from it being very efficient at killing since enemies can only really come in from the entrance, the hack is still really lax in both map design and in requiring to wait 9 minutes for the helicopter just to hit almost nothing. This hack is made for the leader. The old version used to be able to be done still even alone in the actual difficulty. But if you want to do this in case it's still, you have to do this with other people. Or well, do it the hard way. This guys will hit a C or a never research the person behind this map. This heist brings me a lot of memories from 2017, from constantly doing it over and over again before the game revamp later that year. 
This mission was reintroduced in May of 2019. The map, aside from it not being original, is actually well made. This is also the only map with planks in which you can cover windows with them. It supposedly creates cover, but it's literally useless as enemies just break it instantly. Since it's a crowd control heist because of the drill being on silent, you will have to host a Everion in the map or kill them all. Hostaging Everion is harder to do, but gives you a challenge and something to actually do while waiting for the drill. If you kill Everion, it's way easier, but you lose a lot of cash even with the scale 6 cents ace. If you complete the heist without getting any civilians, you will get a badge. When the drill door is finished, you now have to open the door using one of many keys, which is extremely easy to do. Then you have gold, cash, and deposit boxes. You can get a decent amount of cash from the heist, and it can be interesting to me loud. Although one thing I don't know yet is why do we need to get the thermal drill at the back of the map? It literally just looks like a normal drill. And also, why do the tear gas have to last that when well, it doesn't last that long? It lasts forever, it never goes away. I like the idea, but why does it need to last the whole time? This is based more on personal experience, so this has its an A. No mercy, I mean, okay? The first thing is about the map design, and it's a maze. While it is practically no mercy, the layout is mostly original and different from the original highs, and the ICO is the best part of it. For the mission, the goal is to hit 4 valid blue samples from one patient. You can interstell the first part by shooting out the cameras or drive going loud. Then use a teddy bear, which is actually a bomb, to open the doors. The next part is neat. You have to open this right blast door color by cutting wires. You can do this randomly until you find the right patient, or you can do this puzzle. And where finding the right room color with a certain septum with four clip rows around the map, you can find the correct one. The favorite thing I like about this map is that there are a lot of enemies. You can control the hallways really well, and you can wander around the map slaughtering any enemy you see while your team is search objectives. And that's really one thing I hate about this map is that there are no objectives. There is not a lot of do aside from killing enemies. When you do head for samples and call the elevator, you don't do anything else but wait and hold off. They can stop the elevator by using the power resources around the map with ser no pure post but to be decoration. If this high could be longer would require more play interaction, I would love it even more. When you do head to the elevator as they arrive, you end up being airstrike until the mission ends. Uh, although in a surviving somehow anyway. But there is one more thing to this map, a secret. It involves the panic buttons around the map. If you break all the cameras and press all the four buttons while still in stealth, you will complete the first step. The second step is to break each ICU and find the right patient at the first try. You can do this easily by completing the clip proposal from early. After that, you complete the mission like normal. When you head into the elevator, you will be teleported to a secret part of the map and where you have to play a flare. However, there is a lot of zombies, so it's hard to lay the flare in the middle of your soul. It's heavily recommended you wait until your soul ends. When you do light the flare, you have to hold off until you hit Orsec again and finish the mission, which unlocks the panic room bass. Overall, this mission isn't very rewarding, but it is actually fun. The map is well made despite being no mercy from a certain game. Look, a lot of you are going to heavily disagree with me and this one, but I'm giving it an ass. I just found the map very amazing. The way you can hold different hallways from enemies, almost sure of this, 
and the secret of all, and the fact that I'm though mostly loud, has it touched his butt. Transport is a mission about delivering blocks cola to a harbor. Unfortunately, you had ambush while in Chihuahua, which leads to the first day. You survive the ambush around the track and wait for the drop of vehicle to arrive, which usually is short as the assault ends. You can choose whether you want to throw the bags to one spot on the fence or let the cops take them back until the vehicle arrives in which you retrieve them back after you drop the required amount of items in the needle of pickle which is all 12 bags in the high head difficulty you then wait for the safety helicopter which arrives in only a minute I don't really like this state there is nothing else to do wait for the truck and maybe the fence bags but that's it at least I can't talk quickly in day 2 however you get ambushed again at the harbor and you need to sign a boat using a power switch to activate some lights. When the boat arrives, you can only carry four bags at once. So when she has his difficulty, you need to wait for him to come back two times. So you need all 12 bags. When you do secure all bags, you can now escape on a helicopter and hit a good amount of cash. The day to map is an alarm from which the sunset looks amazing. She object this one well, they see a remedies decreasing but and she was giving the highs and A, just for the day to map design. And because it's somewhat rewarding considering it coming down in under 20 minutes easily. So if you wanted a mission in loud to get some decent cash off, without repeating the same meta highs over and over again, this might be an option. If thing 1 and 2 happening to be interesting in any way when it comes to objectives, it will be an S. The Ray Shadow Legend Heist consists of infiltrating a warehouse to steal all the loot which can be hidden in different places. Some are on the open, some are hidden, some are in some red containers outside, some are inside building crates you have to open using a crowbar, and there's a special loot of each mission. Inside the vault in the warehouse, there's a Samurai Amor consisting of four baccalaureate parts. When combined, it can be worth more than a million. The wall is located behind two keycards, which are carried by two random cards around the map. The heist is there only, so if you set out the alarms, you have two minutes to escape. The mission is somewhat variable. You can choose whether you want to go to the front, the roof, or you can balance it, which gives you two thermal pastes, which you can use on the cybers to burn to the walls and head inside the warehouse. Personally, I should prefer going from the roof, you can take the camera guard from here quickly and start looting from the upper floor. Anyways, while looting, it's kind of annoying to have someone looking at you, which forces you to stop with whatever you were doing, even if your interaction was almost finished. This is one thing I don't believe it has a lot for, it's just annoying. When you do get all the loot, you might as well open the wall. And one thing I've seen people complain a lot for is that the cars with the keycard don't spawn. Which they do. It's just that to identify them, you have to look in the tunnel if they are red launcher. And sometimes it's difficult to see, or, or I don't know, maybe it's just blind. Anyways, when you do finish the heist, you can gain a lot of money. 
if you manage to memorize all your spawns and a consistency strategy which you can do it quickly. It's also possible to use in range highs which means to place all in CMs as long as possible until the alarm goes off and with 4 people you can full switch highs in under 4 minutes if you're all coordinated and act. In giving this haste and A, it can be done quickly, it is sometimes very rewarding compared to the time you take, you can help it through multiple ways, but I sometimes I know very patient and well it's not exactly very very different from the original. Authority is a heist on a military control area, and they are destroying different types of loot inside crates, which have a time bomb. If the time is over before the crate explodes, which the loot inside will be not recoverable. That's kind of like the opposite of Shadow Ray. You have to defuse the bomb in the crate, and then you can open the crate for the loot inside it. It can be money, gold, blocks of color, or weapons, and there are 12 crates around the map. If you cannot check great spans well, you can alone defuse all the crates or the majority of them at least. In just minutes, wait some teammates, while well, once with a brain. You can force switch the highs really quick, although finding people with functional brain cells in not right is quite race or I don't know. You can also do the highs loud, which doesn't touch really change anything. It's a mission with a unique military assault. Now, what difference is there a vault with a police assault and a military assault? Well, nothing. It just replaces so much a regular enemies with just skins of protected units, which have more health than a bulldozer. Now, and only so much a regular units, because there are still a lot of regular units using police assault still appear. The problem I have with this one is that military assaults are not very unique compared to the police assaults. The National Guard soldiers might have more health than a dozer, but still they are in the majority of enemies. The other units still spawn a softer. So basically, it's just a regular assault with, with some view of units. This heist has a B. It can be a decent heist just to have some cash off. And the map looks great, but it's just because it doesn't ma have many incident things on it. Maybe if military assaults were more unique, or if there were special events in loud like a banshee appearing. Black Friday is allowed only heist in a mall in Black Friday. Hear it? The goal is to get 3 bucks randomly located in no one around the map and there apparently a dozen of material. This heist isn't really rewarding nor fun and it can only be done in Lao, but it can be done quickly, except for one small problem. If you hit the storage room, you have to wait for the drills, which is low, around 2 minutes of waiting. Why can't you just blow up or so open the doors? The storage room is the main reason why I don't like this map. Every other city is quick and easy, except this one. If you hit this one, be ready to go through minutes of training. Anyways, you can hit some loot, but it isn't still a lot. In fact, the heist contract costs cost quite a lot, so you lose way more money from this heist than you gain. This heist hits an E. It's quite bad, but not as terrible bad as this next one. Also, some people make a comparison of this heist with selling x mask from Payday 2. I kind of hate it why, but that's not what they're very going for when making this special.
ir lor Abin voitin ce vol tanto ta ka vojis wan Out of all che mission si no toraiti Kokov is solely one of them Chase monstrosity of it has every downside che other bad missions has combined into one Terrible map, an additional, very long, an interesting, linear, very boring, annoying and unrewarding It makes fun of the play in every possible aspect First, the map is terrible and it doesn't change a lot from the original But that's not the worst part, not even close You have to have the ingredients that make Blossy Cola and the lab or the upper floor Now, what makes this race terrible is that every batch of Blossy Cola takes the last 3 minutes to make Doesn't sound like a lot, right? Well, remember that you need 8 bucks in number difficulty to escape. So, in the base case scenario, you'll spend 23 or 25 minutes only making breaks, and the process is really boring. That's if you don't lose time for screaming up or being distracted, because it's really easy to get distracted on this map, total with your teammates or to kill enemies, because that's probably the only apps that can conduct this map. It has a quite a lot of enemies, which makes it quite an easy map, me grinder. Unfortunately, if you want to escape and, and beat your skills, you still need to complete the mission And completing this very boring mission still requires the 8 packs You need to look at the line from J to see which ingredient is the right one But sometimes the moment you see the right ingredient, it just disappears And that's easy to miss the right ingredient because you focus on something else if you choose the wrong ingredient, you lose all progress you made at the batch and you have to do another batch again Oh, and you, if you do not choose with all the teammates, the might go spare you from failing to make a single pack of Rossi Cola 3 times in a row If you keep trying like that, you might finish the heist in 40 or 50 minutes There is only one way to do this heist and not only it's very boring but barely anything changes Before update 3.0 a, which was around 2 years ago and a half, the only objective required the same amount of bugs in every difficulty, which in Kokov at the time was only 3 bugs, amazing. However, for some unknown reason, unknown to men, the developers thought it would be funny to add more required bugs to add the difficulty. I'm not blue why the TikTok it would make it any more difficult, and not only being for Kokov, but just long hikes in general. I personally don't find how moving bugs more than required and more than privileges needed around the ball map is more scale based. But that's just me and maybe I'm wrong. Feel free to tell me in the comments. Back to Kokov, it's horrible. You don't have paid a lot either. While to me you may sound like a lot, it's really bad compared to the horrendous time you took to make it. The experience given is even worse. Oh, and if you wonder why did we do cook of 100 bucks like 4 months ago, it was because I did it with people, while at least on the roller they connected me up while at 70 bucks. Doing it alone would love it mentally impossible. Even with all the time of the world and not being able to go down a single time, doing the same thing in the same soulless space for 6 hours is just not worth it. We all know where this one goes into. If it was for me, I would make multiple tasks below and place it at the very bottom. The developers are thinking of removing this guys, and to be honest, I will completely agree with the decision. It's the best developed this guys is even worth fixing, and personally, I think I know, because not even heavily increasing the money reward will make this thing worth playing. Neck Cloud is a heist where the goal is to steal blocks of cola off a neck cloud honed by an enemy gun. This mission is known as being the quickest and efficient way to get experience to grinding levels. It can also work as a good way to get cash. This heist has high contra cost which is a way to balance the highs I guess when it comes to the map well there is not a lot of it there it's really similar to the original 
I will say it's a start of highs because the amount of cash you have charged on it is insane. Coral, this one has an A. Hunt the forest is a Halloween team mission located in a forest, a haunted, door, a foggy one. Anyway, at the very start of the map, there is a van and crossing the river. At the very north end of the map, there is a brew called by this man, which has 4000 HP in the nightmare difficulty. However, that amount of HP is nothing compared to what's coming next. When you kill the enemies, you notice the art become ghost. Ghost enemies are 5 times the end, the whole of the original enemy. So if you kill a dozer with just 3000 health, it become a ghost and have 5000 health. Now you have to fight over both enemies from whole endless. And the problem is that this map is designed terrible. Just very few cover. The only viable ones are the giant walls of grass surrounding you. And no, the tons of war bones stand because they still can get your hitboxes. And you also have one enemy spam behind you. One thing that I don't understand about the map is why does the band need to be at the very south of the map and the main objective at the end of the map. And not quite sure the map was so rushed to be a new mission in 2018, but it was terrible at the time. This was back when Neymar Lau was even more annoyed. This chamber system was already bad, and now having to fight enemies with 5 times the health, yeah, in normal difficulty, this was hard, and not in a fun way. And it still is, it's just not as hard as before. Anyways, when you get to finish killing and of course, you take the brew and escape. And you get a decent amount of cash reward out of it. I know that not everything is meant to be for all difficulties, but even a normal this mission is terrible. The ghost idea is that bad, but when you have very little cover and enemy spans are all around you, well, the idea was just terrible of Hakikute. This mission in normal difficulty can thankfully be done in a quick time, so that's a plus. This mission hits an A. May this mission will rework one day. This mission is a beauty, it's Coco, but in reverse. Instead of being terrible in every aspect, it's great or perfect in every aspect. Good map design, not only is the map really detailed and very well made, but it's also the largest map in all of notoriety when it comes to accessibility at least. Hand with decoration and an amazing amb ambience everywhere. It is the best at that. The mission is an original idea by itself. Some people are going to pull an Alexo Heist here, but we are ready to talk about it before. Well, first, let's talk about the goal of the Heist. We are in the course located in Toronto, where the rock band, you know, and the Ocellas are playing on. And the main objective is to sell the Golden Guitar. At first, getting past the Air Fight box and to get inside the basement, you have to do the Air Fight box ID and check color bully prints to find the right power box and the right color order. The so in the puzzle, you can either head the keycard first by finding it in one of two VIP rooms in the basement or you can head to the administration room which can spam in one of two spots. Finding the right archive box will make the culture manager to the scarces close to the administration room. And you can hostage or grant him to get this USB. After inserting the USB in the laptop, you will have the wall code and allow with the keycard. 
creo que no, oh, me eché gol. Just to head scam. Tres, no call them play guitar or chip ball. Che guitar is actually being held by one of the bone members in the middle of the concert. So Jay's come up with a plan and you need a hook and a rope from the basement. With them, you head inside the concert the preparation area and have the concert laptop. Head on the catwalks about the stage, prepare the rook and rope or hook and rope, hook and, hook and rope and activate the power system. The concert goes dark and you know how the golden get up or sex medium. You know how to escape by hitting a disguise from the locker room and you can now escape. There are also trophies you can collect in the showcase area, giving you extra money, although it's sometimes annoying. Getting all of them will give you a pass. And why this a fun gameplay is because it requires you to actually pay the highs and move console the around the map. A lot of missions are long ways until you actually proceed with your objective, and this mission has many but interesting objectives. Halo just match the highs the hardest in the game according to the majority of the community, but that doesn't mean you can do it easily. The first time you play the highs, you'll enter without experience and fail and fail, but the more you can know how the highs works, some safe tactics and how to use a stamina well and most importantly the real niche map layout and the objectives will make you able to play these guys with ease and quicker than before. This mission also is variable. Instead of having the same power boxes at the same place, they're spread around the map well. Yes, some may take longer or even difficult to hit, but with some practice, you can still complete the mission without bad luck. And the administration room is spams in one of two places. Although just there's one is far away, I should prefer it this way. RNG in a game is necessary to not make it play the same every time. As long as it's executed well, of course. Anyway, the goal of the mission is original and fun, and the rewards you get are worth your effort, which is the highest amount of cash you can get in a single game, not counting infinite hack missions. They're not that good at getting cash. The experience you get while not being the best is surely cool and can make a difference while grinding levels. So, all of this is a really good map design and the immersive elements, the original objectives, the length and variability to the mission, the rewarding money and cash, match is high, head and ass. It's a masterpiece and the best highs in the game, according to my very humble opinion. I didn't really do sell a lot until this mission was released. Now, having to remind everyone that I'm not saying that every heist should be complex. I have some complaints about the heist, but they are not major or important. For example, the dissection meter, which increases in a weird way, but this is apparently caused by the map being huge and the guards being moving around the map at the same time. So this high mission is practically suffering from success. Then, there's the fact that the detection meter displays every unnecessary detection meter and not only yours, so you can get kind of nervous on your 11 to 21 teammates running around the map, but this is more of a game complaint than a for the mission, since it appears on all other still highs. I can't find much else to complain about, except for the time I talked to my which was around a year and two months delay after delay. But I think it was absolutely worth it. Golden Mask Casino, 
is one of two game pass guys in the game, along with Breakpoint. You decide to go spell, you have to check back the map with the search of archers until you have some blueprints. Scan them or the fax machine, get a kicker from this man. Don't lock this room so you can pour all the gas on the vents. Chase will take all the guards in the control room. Effectively, disable the cameras. Then finding and hit three guard mess located around the map in the social room next to the entrance. One in the manager room and the other one is on the many lockers in the locker room. Then you can open the vault and get the cash. And you need at least 10 bucks to escape in our difficulty. There are four guards in the set staff area, which can see the bodies with the doors of the control room being open. And also see you moving bags, so you can take them out if you need to. Then, after you get enough bags, you can escape. One commonly used strategy on this map, and for a good reason, is to get the social document at the start of the mission, so you don't need to bother with it anymore. If you want to do the high slow, you teach the C4 at the start of the mission, blow this part of the floor up, set and wait to send using the ports at the delivery room, use the fireballs on the storage room, wait for the really weird room to all over, power it using the power boxes at the open, and defend the power boxes. Use the sinks to fill up water and use it on the trail so it doesn't overheat. When the trail is finished, press the pass and scan the van. The map is very rewarded on loud. Pin the hashtag gives you the most experience in one single game if you complete it loud. The map has since rotated, its dog is very bad. The ambience is non existent. There are no such lighting, no double bounce buildings, nothing, just giant block of grass and a floor made out of rock and a casino in the middle of the night. It doesn't seem like you're in Las Vegas. There is only one entrance of the pelden and it already indicates that the casino is a bad one. Now the page the map is well is very ugly. The decoration is just non-existent. The main gambling room is just a white and half empty space. The only way to gamble in the casino are the slots that are all copied and pasted next to each other. There are no packer tables or anything else. Imagine a big casino where the only way to gamble is with the slots. The single floor has only one way for you to get to it, and it does literally nothing. Aside from the objective, it literally has nothing of value, it's just empty. Like the world map, there is also no good way to get into balconies if basically it's just in the open. I won't complain about the map too much if it didn't affect gameplay a lot, but unfortunately, it does. The social room only has one went in and out, it's a simple small door. It very often has you stuck because some civilian happened to come across. At least if there was another way in for the bathrooms had windows, you could open as another way to get in and out. The old Golden Mask Casino map used to have windows here and as another way to get in. What happened? The current map is very open and civilians can see far away. If you want to go to the sink of floor to open the brick room, you have to go all the way to the stairs with a lot of civilians watching you in the up. Why is there only one way in? Both of the balconies no have any cover at all. And why does the second floor just suck in general? Why does the map suck in general? I've seen people say the cell is too easy and make suggestions such as double the station speed. And when I show in these guys, they went quiet. The really open areas used to be fine back when civilians could detect you from 6 meters away at best. The reward you get is really good though. If you do loud, you can get a best experience of 750k, which is the hardest in the game possible. And you can get up to 2 mission base cash if you get all the bugs. At what cost? Well, you have to look at this awful map. I'm not quite sure where are a lot of ugly looking maps and the worst one in this video are made by Hellish Canadian. It's almost like he barely put any effort into making them. This guy has a B only because of the rewards and the somewhat interesting self. If it wasn't for that, it would go really low. Thankfully, this mission is one day going to arrive. Big Bang. Well, that was the name of the October 2018. 
The final map on the mission list, correct one, where you enter a shoe back from town, located in what seems to be near your sector. To help the wall, you first need to help pass the time locker. You activate it by hitting the code from the correct computer, which thankfully, instead of having to try everyone, is smart watch again as soon as you start. Then, after the hook is finished, you start the time lock, and this is where the main problem with this mission starts. It takes too long. The time block also breaks so you have to restore it, at worst you have to restore the time block 3 times, while at least one way is in bad enough. Well how about you? Yes, you have to wait for the drill on the wall, which takes a long time. Is there really not any other way to open the wall? You basically do nothing for the rest of the guys. So, if you have made 3 patches before, you're screwed. Since there are two static cores in the area, you have to forcibly take out. After doing practically nothing for 4 minutes, it's time to finish the hack. No, you have no how to wait for the dress on the ball door and for the helicopter to arrive doing nothing for minutes, except restarting drills. Or if you have the auto repair skill, you literally do nothing but FK. Oh, by the way, if you allow, you have to wait 9 minutes of the helicopter instead of 5. After waiting a cold minute amount of time, you finally have to do something, which is move back to your roof. Big Bang is the most custom missile behind in PDA 2. When it comes to option to complete it, you can choose the regular one escape, but change it to the helicopter at the roof if you go loud. The option is the least optional and save what cast no points to head. You can then choose the helicopter escape, the C4 escape, the bus escape. The way you open the wall can vary. Instead, you open the wall by handing the code from the manager's computer and then pressing two buttons to authorize it. In launch, the default option is by dropping a piggy bank from the crate. However, there is an alternative option, which is using the thermite. It costs points and you can use the wall escape with it at the same time, but it is safer and more optimal to use as it never stops. Big one by itself is one of the best and most well designed guys in all of payday. Then, there is this. Way after way after way, with only one way to don't bench a ball and only one way to escape that is all the way of the roof. The map is like any map by the headers, however, I will say that it's the best map price made when it comes to detail and design. Now that doesn't mean anything, it's still really lax. Imagine how much the quarter must be in this room. The only good thing I can give about the means is your outdoor setting. It makes you feel like, like you're ruining an actually important man. I don't mind my objectives if they're actually interesting and they make you wait an unnecessary amount of time. The reward is actually really good for the amount of cash and experience, which the more bad you take, the higher the experience output. However, compared to the time you take completed and the really boring object is to go through, it is isn't one of the best for grinding levels of cash. It is a good one at that, but not really the best. In summary, this cash is a really good amount of experience and cash for the really boring and very repetitive objectives, the mediocre map design and the very sleepy lane of the guys, that this guys a B. However, this guys like a few others hitting at the band one day, although one if it happen will be a mystery until we find out. The majority of guys in notoriety are, well, not good. Well, according to me at least, they're okay. There is good and really good mission to this and the very bad ones. This game has a lot to come. There is also going to be a revamp for many bad guys, like Rush Hour, which will replace four stores, and the return of all maps like War Bank, Breakout, and Passable Terminal. This video is going to become updated, but until then, Authority is heavily based on baby. If you have any complaints on how we rated the highs or things I forgot to add, tell me in the comments. I'll then, then bye. I don't tell a new to subscribe, but uh, please subscribe with more 1,000 subscribers, and I want to hit that before 2023.